Honestly, I think the battery industry is obsessed with recycling. We are talking more about what will happen with the batteries when they die than how we will best use them when they actually are alive. One reason for this is that there are so many out there claiming that it's not possible to recycle if you mine batteries and that they are going to landfill, or even worse, that they are dumped. That, which by the way is not true, has spurred a discussion around the benefits of different processing technologies and who has made the most important breakthrough than the other. Today, I want to focus on a few other aspects which actually has bigger impact on the recycling market than how the recycler choose to, to process their materials. This is a fairly typical London street. On this street there are 24 households. In each of these households there are about 3 to 4 mobile phones, there are 2 laptops, a tablet, some power tools, a camera and increasingly portable speakers, cordless vacuum cleaners. All of these devices are using lithium-ion batteries. On average, there are about two kilos or four pounds of lithium-ion batteries in each of these houses. That means that on this street, there are about 50 kilos or 100 pounds of lithium-ion batteries. Now, if every house would buy an electric bike, that will double the amount of batteries on this street from 50 to 100 kilos. Right now, there is only one electric car here, this beautiful Vauxhall Ampera, in North America better known as the Chevy Volt. The weight of the battery in this car is about 200 kilos. It means that with only one car, the amount of batteries on this street has quadrupled. When all of these cars will be electric, given that most EVs today have significantly larger batteries than this one, the amount of batteries only on this street will go from 50, 50 kilos to 10 tons. This is what this change is all about. In 2030, we estimate that over 2,500 gigawatt hours of om or almost 13 million tons of battery cells will be placed on the market. As you can see, we estimate that 75% of these batteries will be installed in light and heavy vehicles. If we instead look at what will reach end of life, this is a very different story. Instead of 13 million tons, only 1.6 million tons will reach end of life by the end of this decade. This can be compared with 1.4 million tons placed on the market in 2020, while 350,000 tons were reaching end of life. That's a much closer relationship indeed. There can be two reasons for this. The first one being the enormous growth we see. If the market for new batteries is growing significantly faster than it is used to do, the end of life rate will obviously not keep up. But that is actually not the case. The lithium ion battery market has an astounding growth almost from day one in the early 90s. Instead, it's because the batteries last longer. Or more correct, they are used in applications which we use much longer. There is a common idea that EV batteries will last about 8 years, which basically is the same as a car maker's warranties. In China, a common estimate is 4 to 5 years. None of these estimates have been proven correct. One reason for this is that we are actually not driving that far. Thus, we aren't really using the batteries as much as we could. This chart shows that cars are driven less the older they get. In fact, they are not driven that much at all. Early electric vehicles are on average cycled 100 times a year. But that is because they have quite small batteries. A Tesla Model S, which is, uh, has a significantly larger battery, is usually cycled around 50 times a year. Another reason is that even if the battery would lose some of its capacity, we can still use it. The early Nissan Leafs are a good example of that. They have a small battery, especially compared to, to, to today, and not least in the US, many of them have shown some degradation. A few of them, in fact, serious degradation. This has affected the values, and today you buy Nissan Leafs, or early Nissan Leafs, for four to five thousand dollars. Compare this to almost any gasoline compact that would set you off about ten thousand dollars for the same model. But five thousand is still five thousand, 
And if you buy a car for $5,000, you don't aim to send it to the scrapyard very soon. Instead, you employ it to do a job it is capable to do, such as picking up the kids from school or carry your groceries shopping. Our data suggests that the batteries in EVs will rarely be replaced. Instead, the, ba the battery will reach end of life when the car does. So when is that? Well, I think many of us, we expect that more cars reach end of life the, the older they get. Well, that is not entirely what the data says. In fact, the scrap rate for, for cars is almost constant over its lifetime. In this chart, we, we, we see a quota of each year model for Nissan Leaf, and that it doesn't suggest that more Leafs reach end of life than new ones. In fact, even for a car like Toyota Prius that has been on the market for more than 20 years, we still have no hockey stick. Because cars don't reach end of life by age. They do it when it's not economic to keep the car. But still, after 20 years, cars are scrapped in, in a more rapid pace, sure. What's interesting though is that they might not be as many as we might have expected. Many cars that reach end of life, both in North America and in Western Europe, will be acquired by importers in countries where, where repairs are cheaper and where the cars can be placed on the market again. This is a destiny also for many used cars. This chart shows how you will find many more early Nissan Leafs in Ukraine and in Russia than what you would find in countries like the US, UK, Germany or Norway. Despite the fact that the cars were primarily sold in the latter countries and not at all in Russia and Ukraine. In fact, if you want an old Chevy Volt or the wonderful little Fiat 500e, Eastern Europe is not a bad place. Neither is Costa Rica, Sri Lanka or Jordan. And the export does in fact make a dent in the volumes. If we look at the early models of Nissan Leaf in the UK and Germany, more than 30% have left the country. What's interesting is that this is exactly what more than for more than 10 years has happened with our used electronics, such as mobile phones, laptops and tablets. Used devices are sold to buyers in Asia, in Africa, South America, bringing the old batteries on a journey very far away from home. This is the main reason why we haven't recycled more lithium-ion batteries in North America and in Europe, not that we are landfilling them. Actually, we have found only two studies in the world on whether batteries are ending up in the wrong places. And to be fair, based on one of the studies, we have estimated that between 600 and as much as 2,600 tons of lithium-ion batteries might end up in the municipal waste stream in the US every year. What's interesting though is that the same study would imply that the amount of lead-acid batteries going in the same direction in fact would be eight times that number. This would mean that between 2 and 10% of the batteries in the US would end up in municipal waste. So what's happening with the other 90 to 98%? Are they then recycled? Well, first of all, lithium-ion batteries are reused. And they are not always reused in the so elegantly structured way we have seen in many Second Life projects. They are reused as is, back in the vehicles sold by the car dismantlers. They are remanufactured, going back to the vehicles and, and also used for upgrades. And they are repurposed for, for completely different tasks. This has always been the case for portable batteries, especially for 18650 cells which have been harvested from, from laptop and medical batteries by, by both hobbyists and industrial players. And now this is happening for EV batteries. Modules from Tesla, Nissan, BMW and Mitsubishi are extremely popular in several new markets which didn't exist only a couple of years ago. So, so what are we riding? This is a 1965 Volkswagen commercial pickup truck, double cab. It's a little rare in the United States. It didn't import too many of the double cab. And since we have a double cab, we put double motors in it. We have twin HP EVS AC50 motors doing about 65 kilowatts each. So we're at about 130 kilowatt peak. Um, we can do more. We've turned it up, but uh, we just break transmission parts. <laughs> <laughs> so. 
But what we really want to do is increase the drivability of the vehicle. With the regenerative braking, it feels like it has power brakes. Yeah. Uh, the steering's heavy in older vehicles, so we put electric uh, steering assist in, which is fantastic. It's nicer than hydraulic. And then, of course, we put the drive line. And again, it's not crazy, but this is, you know, 130 kilowatt. Wow. Yeah, not <laughs> bad, right? <laughs> cycles in here and so it's really functional as far as a truck goes you know wow um, yeah and what, what's the battery from so what? this this is a uh, the Tesla module that they made for Daimler so it's right 18 uh, 650 module it's 15s that they made for the uh, for the B class the okay. first no pre, uh, predates the B class it's the first generation of um, the smart uh, the smart yeah. yeah right all of this is keeping the batteries from being recycled. Instead, they are now used in applications which many times will have far longer lifetime than the original application they were installed in. On top of this, we have the initiatives led by OEMs, where batteries from in-warranty replacements, upgrades and leasing programs generate more consolidated streams, which enables the use of them in larger stationary energy storage systems or industrial applications. So, how much batteries are and will be recycled? Well, at Circle Energy Storage, we follow the batteries from one, when they are placed on the market throughout the life cycle until they are reused and ultimately recycled. This is not a precise science. Nobody in the world needs to report exactly how many batteries they have recycled. It's based on both bottom-up work through contacts and visits around the world, as well as top-down estimates based on our knowledge about the over 100 companies around the world that are involved in the recycling industry or recycling batteries. The data shows that last year about 210,000 tons of lithium-ion battery cells were available for recycling around the world and it's our presumption that most of that also was, was recycled. It also shows that 820,000 tons will be recycled in 2030. Again, the slower pace compared to the sales of batteries is due to the fact that a larger share of batteries are now placed in equipment that is in use much longer than it was before. What we also see is that the most of the end-of-life batteries will be recycled in China. During the decade, a big share of the batteries will be processed in the rest of the world, which essentially means South Korea and Southeast Asia, but also in Canada. Europe will, however, take market share. When we are approaching 2030, not least because increased capacity, but also because of larger volumes being generated. What's important to note is that this is end-of-life volumes. To this, a significant amount of production waste should be added. This is also the good news for, for both Europe and North America, because contrary to many, many's belief, recycling is not necessarily best placed where the end-of-life volumes are generated, but rather where they actually will be used. With increased battery production in both Europe and North America, the prospect for recycling will therefore increase. I don't think anyone need to worry about lithium-ion batteries being landfilled. At today's prices, a recycler could theoretically obtain around $8 a kilo for NMC cells. Whether they are able to actually recover that and how much of the value they will be able to keep depends on the process efficiency, but also how deeply integrated they are. What really is required is scale. For that we need more batteries. And the good thing is that they will come. And that it will take a while is nothing really to be sad about, because bear in mind, the batteries are just doing the job that the users have employed them to do. And that is a good thing. That is exactly what we wanted. Thank you very much.